I guess I'm curious. This popped up in my head. Um, you know, there was that Facebook ad thing with the Trump campaign where I guess they had 88 ads that they had uh, that they had put out on Facebook. And, on, you know, it was one of those things where, like, we need to defend ourselves against far left radicals and uh, Antifa and uh, the image, one of the images that were that was used in these ads was an, an inverted red triangle, which people pointed to as that's a symbol that the Nazis used to identify, I guess, political dissidents, communists, these types. So I'm curious, I, I, I feel like Trump, because you point to Trump specifically in your pieces, but I feel like I don't know how uh, much of a grasp he has on these situations i i mean i think he's maybe feeling it almost like as an in it's sort of i want to use the word intuitive i don't know if he's an intuitive person but there's almost this emotional gut thing that he's doing but i feel like the people that are actually doing these things like this facebook ad which was taken down by facebook um with this reference to and and we should we should explain um what uh 88 is yeah and i would like to ask you that so i wanted you to unpack that and to explain the what that means the symbol why that's significant but yeah, my, but, yeah, the, but I, also I, I just wanted to point to the fact that i think that there are people in trump's administration those that are part of his campaign as he pointed to with some of these these so-called lone wolf attack type things that are directly connected to the trump campaign but you have actual high level officials people with very close to trump that are i imagine that are fully conscious of what they're doing here and i'm curious what your well, thoughts Steven, are on that Steven. Stephen Miller is a fucking Nazi. We've got a Jewish Nazi in, in charge. <laughs> I mean, look, we 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 have concentration camps. That is absolutely indisputable, right? You know, it's just like concentration camps go, you know, it, it it's I I believe, you know, often and one of the funny things about concentration camps is just like it, it's a, it's only concentration camp when it happens to white people, right? A lot of people think it starts with um the Boer War where um the British were imprisoning um uh, uh, the Dutch uh, Afrikaners in concentration camps that were that were really brutal the civilians right. but there were actually two before that it was uh, the um, Spanish in Cuba and apparently that's where concentration comes from recontracion um, and all it means is you're concentrating people of some specific distinguishable group imprisoning them in a camp um, because of their group identity. Now, concentration camp is not equivalent to death camps. Concentration camps can become death camps. And um, the woman, I think her name is Pritzker, she wrote One Long Night, which is this global history of concentration camps. You know, she she says, you know, left unchecked, the tendency of concentration camps is to become more and, and more uh, brutal. And in, in fact, she talks about like Ravensbrück, which was the women's concentration camp in Nazi Germany when it was when it was uh, first opened, you know, for uh, political prisoners and dissidents who would be wearing a red triangle that the Trump campaign used in its ad. Um, They were given fresh linens. They were given silverware. um, Meals included like sausage, bread, fruit, jams. You know, it's just like it you know hey you know that's a pretty good uh, concentration camp but eventually it would become a death camp you know and so we've seen this in the u.s where all these children are being imprisoned in camps for no reason other than the fact that they are migrants um and that they are children right they are being persecuted based on their group identity and in conditions you know where where they're also dying where there's rampant uh uh, sexual assault um and abuse there's all these you know stories of uh emotional abuse um by the guards and who knows, could very well also be other forms of physical abuse because the Trump administration won't let uh, uh, people in. Um, so, you know, it's just like Stephen Miller is is the architect of this policy. And, you know, I can't name all the names, but there have been all these white nationalists who basically 
come into um, the Trump administration. And they're also totally open, right? Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson is a white nationalist. He promotes fascistic ideas openly. He um, I, uh, started, uh, you know, with the, the Daily Caller. There was all that stuff that came out about him calling like uh, Iraqis uh, semi-literate primitive monkeys or something. Like total racist. But he was promoting the white genocide conspiracy theory in uh, South Africa uh, last, uh, I believe it was last year. Um, and, you know, this is this conspiracy that, you know, it's just like, oh, whites are going to, they're trying to wipe, wipe out white people. And then he was doing it um, just a couple of weeks ago about the U.S. You know, this movement, Black Lives, it's not about Black Lives. They're coming for you. You know, it's just like, oh, so now he's basically promoting white genocide in the U.S. And it's just like he is he's like if if um, Stephen Miller is the Himmler, uh, Tucker Carlson is the Goebbels. And just because it hasn't become as bad as, as Nazi Germany doesn't mean that it can't. Um, recently, I was I was just down in the border earlier this year at uh, one of these refugee camps. Never before in U.S. history have there been massive refugee camps on the U.S. border. There are, of course, you know, reservations, internal internment camps, the concentration camps in Japanese um, after the destruction of Black Wall Street, which, you know, ha just happened 99 years ago and, and where Trump uh, went and, you know, literally rubbing salt in the uh, wounds on uh, people in Tulsa. Um, I, I, the survivors, something, and it's estimated up to 300 African-Americans were killed. No one knows. And they still won't uh, look for the mass graves there. You know, that's the thing about, like, I think what a lot of the reporting about Tulsa really misses, the fact that this trauma has never gone away. And the state and the city consistently refuse to give reparations to acknowledge uh, what what happened to um, there have been these uh, survivors who you know just dying off dying off because it happened nearly a century ago now who've been um, uh, trying to get uh, reparations uh, some their whole life for them in the community and they refuse to you know they refuse to you know do this type of forensic analysis of what happened on and, you know, the way they're reporting, it's now finally acknowledging, oh, it, instead of a racial attack, like what the hell is a racial attack, right? <laughs> you know, it would, you know, or, or a race riot. It's like, what the hell is a race riot? This was a pogrom. They can't even use that word pogrom. But now it's finally like a racist mob. But it wasn't just a racist mob. It was a whole power structure. In fact, the U.S. Army um, sent a plane to bomb Black Wall Street right. um, uh, while, w while this pogrom was going on, but the survivors were herded into a concentration camp, right? So yeah, Donald Trump, the thing we have to understand about Trump is like, he's both like just a complete drooling moron. And he's also this phenomenal genius, right? The guy has no book learning, he has no erudition. But he is absolutely remarkable at um, manipulating the media, uh, manipulating people's emotions, at, at spinning hate uh, into political gold. He's really one of the most uh, successful demagogues um, in, in world history. So, you, you know, it's, it, it's, it's fun to make fun of him, but if you just make fun of him, you're really missing uh, what, what's going on um, in, in terms of how successful he's been. Because look at this moment we're in, you know, you have basically the Great Depression, the 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 pandemic of 1919, you know, the the violent white backlash, and you know that's something we we should talk about. Every time there's a black political or social upsurge, there is always a violent white backlash to it, and that's what we're seeing now with all these militias coming out, or you know, or places like Philadelphia, South Philly, where you have these like just mobs of goombas, you know, with like you know baseball bats and iron <laughs> Rods, yeah. you know, attacking people while meanwhile the cops are like, oh, I don't see anything here. You know, because they're, they're basically they're the same race as fucks. They're inter they're interchangeable, you know. Yeah. Um, so but um this this whole 
history that we see is going on, Trump is very extraordinarily good at, at manipulating it. And, you know, he's as like I, I heard someone else say, um, he's a, a vicious, viciously talented psychological terrorist. So, you know, it's just like, yeah, he knows how to hone in completely on people's weak spots and then ruthlessly um, exploit it. So in a lot of ways, I think he's too stupid um, to know that he's a fascist, that he's essentially an American Nazi. But then again, so so many, so are many Americans. And this is the thing that I, you know, my conclusion about fascism is that in a lot of ways, it's very much a corporeal ideology. It's an ideology of the body. And, you know, you see it with Trump, you know, he uses disgust often. Right. Especially with like yeah. women, you know, it's just like Hillary Clinton is disgusting. Um, uh, who's that? Uh, the uh, Fox News host, um, you know, she had blood coming out of her wherever. It's like disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. But the wall is beautiful. The tests are beautiful, you know, so it's this kind of like dichotomy. And it's and it also goes from the individual to the body politic. Right. So if, if, you know, we, if he has this personal disgust, you know, against these women, and then there's, uh, there's also disgust against these entire groups who are polluting our body, right? Just in the same way that the women are, are, are polluting his presence, right? With their bodily fluids, right? So the Mexicans are drug dealers, rapists, and, and murderers, right? They're poisoning. These are words that he uses. They're poisoning our youth. Right there, you know, in the Tulsa rally, he talked about like some, you know, like very tough hombre is like breaking into a woman's window, you know, at night while her husband, who's a traveling salesman, is away. And it's just like, I don't think there are many traveling salesmen left in the day of the internet, <laughs> and especially with a pandemic, you know, but it's all about this idea of that the other is this disease that that is like infecting us and weakening us you know muslims are fifth columnists and this is why we have to keep them out this is why we need walls and and barriers and and you know militarized border and it's all about this projection of strength and you know this masculinized violent energy and so this is why i think and because i grew up with a lot of i call them little eichmann's um who uh, many of whom i'm still in touch with in in the um maryland area um who are now all trump supporters and they're too stupid to know that they're nazis but they're Nazis. Um, you know, they, they fall for all this crap. You know, they're anti-immigrant, they're Islamophobes, you know, they go for these like totally like violent reactionary um, roles, traditional roles in terms of uh, uh, gender or race. You know, they have this groupthink uh, cultish mentality. They want to like, you know, it's it's, it's it's both like you know looking back to this idealized notion of the past that never existed and wanting to uh remake uh the future right it's it's a movement in in two directions and it is very fascistic um in in its content uh and so you know trump is someone who i don't think like could articulate the ideology behind but i think we have to take seriously the idea that there's something about fascism that um, sits very well with kind of the way human nature exists in a capitalist society. And that's a very important qualification. I don't want to say that this is like intrinsic to human nature, but I think it is something that is intrinsic to humans under under capitalism. 